my name is Nick Turner and in this module, module 5, we're going to look at how enzymes are engineered using a process called directed evolution. In order for enzymes to be used in practical applications in industry, it's necessary to take them from the nature and improve them so that they are more stable or more robust or more catalytically active. And what we need to understand is the way in which this process happens, both naturally and also in the laboratory. So we need to think about the mechanism by which organisms change, which is related to genetics, and importantly, how can we mimic these processes that occur in nature in the laboratory to engineer and evolve new enzymes. So we need to go all the way back to Charles Darwin, who was the first person really who recognized how organisms in nature adapt to the environment. Um, and he called this process natural selection and famously he wrote his ideas in the book called The Origin of the Species in the mid to late 19th century. Now Darwin uh, generated his ideas by observing the natural selection and the natural variation that was present in the finches of the Galapagos Islands. So he uh, participated in the voyage on the Beagle and they visited the Galapagos Islands and when he went around the different islands which were separated by water he noticed that each of the individual finches had adapted in a slightly different way to the local food source. So some of these Galapagos finches had small beaks, some had large beaks and they seemed in some way perfectly adapted to the local uh, source of seeds. He also knew about artificial selection which was practiced in the late 19th century. So this was the idea of taking plants or, or animals and breeding through artificial selection to get different plants, high yielding plants, different dogs. All dogs for instance are de uh, derived from wild uh, canids. So you can see if you look at the, the canids and if you look at the domestic dogs there's a huge variation that you can achieve through artificial selection. So this led uh, Darwin to the idea of natural selection and natural selection rests on three principal sort of facts. One is organisms produce more offspring than can survive, that's true. Secondly, individuals vary in their characteristics, so uh, offspring are not identical to their parents. And thirdly, through the process of genetics, uh, offspring inherit characteristics from their parents. So you pass on through your genes some of your characteristics. And therefore it follows that some individuals will be better suited to their environment because they're not identical to their parents and therefore they're better adapted to survive and they can take the genes through to uh, future generations to generate better suited individuals. And this is really the, the whole concept and idea of natural selection. And as a result, organisms evolve over time to become better suited to the environment. So this is a process of natural evolution or natural selection. So how can we link these ideas of natural selection, natural evolution, to laboratory evolution to produce enzymes that are better suited for industrial biotechnology? This slide shows the process of generating laboratory evolution of enzymes by essentially taking three types of technology and, as, and assembling them into a laboratory process. The first is to take the gene which codes for the enzyme of interest and to generate a library of randomly mutated genes. So this is where the variation, the natural variation will, will be generated. In the second step that library of mutated genes is converted to a library of mutated enzymes to generate different enzymes from the different genes and in the third step a screening process takes place. So this is akin to the natural selection but now we're going to deliberately screen in the laboratory for specific enzymes that have specific characteristics. We identify improved enzymes by this process and then the real power of laboratory evolution of enzymes is that we can take that best enzyme and put it back through the process again and do a second, third, fourth, fifth round of laboratory evolution until we get to a point where we have a perfectly optimized enzyme. One of the problems, one of the challenges for the laboratory evolution of enzymes is that if you start to do the maths, the numbers of possible different genes and enzymes you can generate is truly astronomical. So for an enzyme of 400 amino acids, there are a total of 20 to the 400 possible different variants. 
to give you some sense of how big this number is, there are approximately 10 to the 70, 10 to the 80 atoms in the universe. So this is, a, by any standards, a huge number. If you look at the uh, alternative approach, if you simply take a typical enzyme and change only one amino acid in that enzyme for any of the other naturally occurring 19 amino acids, you immediately generate 8,000 different variants. So a small, tiny, tiny change generates a lot of different possible new enzymes. If there are two amino acid var varied, it's 160,000 and so on. This slide shows the laboratory evolution of an enzyme called MAO-N, monoamine oxidase N, where we have done exactly the process that I've described in the last few slides. We take the enzyme, the wild type enzyme, we generate libraries and we screen those libraries of enzymes against different substrates to try to develop new biocatalysts with new activities towards the substrates shown on this slide. And by this process of laboratory evolution, we can create new uh, biocatalysts with new activities. And the reason we were interested in this particular enzyme, monoamine oxidase N, on the next slide, you can see that we were able to develop this uh, enzyme, one particular variant of this enzyme, to produce a chiral imine building block from the symmetrical pyrrolidine starting material. And that chiral imine, which we generated in 99% EE, or an antimeric excess, we used for the synthesis of a pharmaceutical drug called telaprevir, which is used for treating hepatitis C. So we were able to, first of all, evolve the particular form of the biocatalyst that we needed, and then secondly, use that biocatalyst to make a key building block for telaprevir. So in summary... What this module has essentially been about is to recognize that enzymes from the natural environment do not always have optimal properties for industrial use, so we need to improve them. In nature, this improvement takes place through organisms, through natural selection and evolution, and we can mimic this process of directed evolution in the laboratory by, selected, by specifically screening for certain types of improved biocatalysts. This process involves generating a large number of variants and intense screening of those variants to find the optimal activity. And we've demonstrated this in this module by the directed evolution of a particular enzyme, monoamine oxidase N, and then applying that specific optimized biocatalyst to the synthesis of a building block for telaprevir.